And uh, one person who's going to be in Cleveland this Sunday is Aditi oh. Kikawala from CBS. There she is. <laughs> What's up, Aditi? What is my hair doing, guys? I, no what is that? I, I got. I got. <laughs> we have to take you off camera because you had one hair out. Of I got. Uh, listen, <laughs> I got. I got the most important question for Aditi. Ooh. I have not done this in a while. So, oh my. Um, would you rather not brush your teeth for a month Ooh. or not shower for a month? Oh, that's a tough. Neither. One. Both are non-negotiable. No, you sorry. had to choose. You had to choose. It's a good question. It's a great question. I mean, I guess it would have to be the teeth, but like, I'm bothered if I don't brush my teeth for a few hours. Like, I hate I, when my teeth are grimy and, mm, you know, like, yeah, I hate it uh, because I'm I don't fat, even like, I, purposely... I, use, I use an electric toothbrush and it yeah, makes my teeth too. really nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And if I'm like gone for three days and I only have the manual toothbrush, it's just not the same. You it have very nice the... teeth. She, she, she got shaves great her teeth. own teeth down. That's crazy. He's got great teeth and... <laughs> Both of those things are horrible. As a fat guy, I try to be really good about my hygiene because I don't want to be, you know, it's easier to get sweaty when you're when you're fat. Yeah. Yeah. So I like oh. I shower at minimum twice a day. Sometimes three. Same. There are days I take four showers. See, that's why that question is so devastating, especially if you big. It's tough. I, well, you I would shower every time you use the bathroom. You every time I before. go, yeah. Every time I use uh, do a number two, Aditi, I go take a shower after. <laughs> thought you'd like to know that. I, no, I mean, you know, you know what? This is a conversation I'll have with you offline, but I think that that's tremendous. I mean, there are many, many parts of the world where you always use water to clean yourself. That's right. Yeah, I got, I'm, because, I'm working you know, on that. Just the toilet some, paper is not enough. I know. I'm getting a bidet or a, what's called a water uh, camera. Oh, you are. I'm getting one of those. I have, to, I have to have a, an outlet put by my toilet. There. Now you know. Like, now you know. Now you know you can't take baths. M grown men should not take be taking baths. no baths. I don't take a bath. Okay, cool. Never. I was just checking. Never. Like, Wait, no. why can't a grown man take? I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I haven't gotten in a bathtub in a long, long time. <laughs> but why can't grown men take baths? If you saw, if you caught your husband with candles lit around the bathtub, <laughs> and I he mean, was he just sitting like there candles, taking but some time. to get in the bathtub. You know, I mean, I can take you in. <laughs> to show you the slipper tub that we put in our master bath, and he has been in that bathtub. I you I can't be in there reading no 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 romance novel with candles lit, yeah, and I'm six yeah. five three so thirty. I like water, and the water just gets cold too fast. Yeah, right. That's like number one. Lukewarm. And number two, like the whole. I don't understand a bath as a way to get clean. Like no. even my gross. My four-year-old loves taking baths. So she sits in the bath and she plays in the bath and the bubbles and we wash her. Hey. But then I insist that like when she gets up, I drain the water and I use the like oh, yeah, you, hose yeah. function to hose rinse. her off. You gotta rinse yes, that off. Rinse like, off like, yeah. water. You can't rinse off with dirty nah. baths. And, nah, it's gross. and you four years old, Agreed. you really not really doing nothing that much to get dirty. Like your legs uh, should be dirty as a four-year-old. Yeah, no, no, no. My kids <laughs> play outside. She like she's always got like mulch in her shoes. I don't know how she, she doesn't smell like her brother. Her brother smells like grown up sweat. Isn't that funny? I don't like yeah. that happens when your boys are like little kids and then all right. of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this grown man sweat. What's yeah, you're a grown man today. By, like, by the way, <laughs> I I did have to go when I tore my Achilles. Uh, uh, I had surgery and then I had to wear a cast on my leg for, I think it was 10 days and then, then I went into a boot. But for those 10 days, I couldn't take a shower. And it was oh, the gosh. worst. Ooh. Oh, was I it, believe it. You know, I'd wash the body. <laughs> But a little, but I, I couldn't, you know, it's different than just doing a, a wash around and doing a shower. I, I felt so, the shower I took um, after that 10 days was the best. I I'm sure. I'm, I'm just like you. I know, you know, like I get off of a plane and I come home, I have to shower. I never get into a bed to sleep without having showered. I obviously shower after I work out. Yeah. yeah. Big showerer. Big, big, big. By the way, outdoor clothes in the bed and especially airplane clothes in the bed. Nasty. No. Uh, Disgusting. No, no, no. Agreed. <laughs> outside clothes. My mom used to make us sit on the porch. There you go. You smell like outside. Get back out. <laughs> I'm like, but it's dark. No, you get out. You smell like outside. Mom's smart. Yeah. That's right. All right, let's get to some football stuff. Aditi, this Deshaun Watson situation is just a mess. It's like, you know, we. I can't remember if we've if we've communicated this to you, but with, when Bernie was here. He taught, he had the same exact injury, and he said, like, you just don't know from week to week how your arm's going to fire. And this is an injury that takes a long time to fully heal. I was just so surprised the Browns didn't 
They tried to get Jacoby Brissett, apparently. Apparently, they reportedly, they offered a sixth-round pick. I'm surprised they didn't try harder. You know, I, I think this team, you know, they can't win a Super Bowl with Jacoby Brissett, P.J. Walker, we get it. But Jacoby Brissett is a way, three classes better than P.J. Walker. And he'd give you, a ch- and this team would be definitely 5-2 and two with, with Jacoby Brissett, no doubt in my mind. Maybe even six and one, uh, but but uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm very frustrated by the fact that they didn't do it because it feels like you, even if he plays, we're going to be holding our breath with Watson every week. My understanding is that Washington was asking a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and the flip to that is that the Browns clearly have some optimism that Deshaun Watson is indeed better, going to be better, will indeed be able to play, that they weren't going to once again sort of mortgage the future for somebody who might come in for just one game. And so I think that that's, maybe there's a whole level of optimism to that. Maybe that's kind of rose-colored glasses, but at least that's the way I'm looking at it. I do think we just got off of our call. You know, it's funny. Mikey was asking me, who are you talking to with the Browns for as part of our production meeting? And I said, I don't know. It's changing every minute because yeah. we're kind of hedging our bets here. <laughs> and we did talk to Walker because we didn't talk to PJ Walker before the indie game, which we obviously had. But if Deshaun Watson is going to be starting, we're going to want to talk to Deshaun Watson as well, obviously. With the Cardinals, we're having to do both of those things as well. Yeah. We don't know if we're talking to Clayton Toon or if we're talking to Kyler Murray. It's kind of all in the air. But it, I, it sounds right now like the Browns are proceeding with some optimism. I mean, P.J. Walker is preparing as a starter, as he should be, but he's not taking 100% of the first-team reps. So I think Bernie telling you that this really is a very tricky injury and that it really is a day-to-day thing should appease fans a bit who are questioning what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Yes, but it's not going to appease people like, I agree with you. The people that are saying, is he really hurt? Why is he not playing? That's stupid. Brady Quinn, I thought his comments were ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't, but it doesn't appease the, even if they're optimistic, how could they be? How, how could, they, after what they saw two weeks ago in Indianapolis, I just don't see how they could be optimistic, even if he starts the game. Like, it, it's fine and dandy to be able to make throws in practice. It's another thing as we saw in the game, Aditi. Well, and to put yourself up to potentially be hit. I mean, that was the point that Kevin Stefanski made, right, in that very game at halftime, that he saw him go down and he just didn't want to risk anything. But I think this is also cumulative time to some degree. You know, like the further removed you get from the initial injury, you do have reason to feel better. And so I think that that's, excuse me, I think that's a piece of it right now as well. I don't... You know, it's just, again, I I feel like I keep saying the same thing. It's just such a shame. This defense is playing at such a high level. You do have a lot of skill position players who are sort of ready to have some continuity or deserve some continuity. I mean, what could Amari Cooper be doing if he had some continuity at the quarterback position? And I'm not bringing up Elijah Moore because I don't want to have the same argument with you all over again. (laughs) But at least Amari is producing. Yes, and that's with barely knowing who he's playing with. You know, Didi, um, I, I threw this out a little bit, but I, I didn't really pull this theory together. I'll throw it out, see what you think. I think a lot of the angst comes from Browns fans and a lot of people, because it's not just the injury. I, I think people um, are even talking about this year going into next year. Even if Deshaun Watson comes back and he plays some games and he plays okay this year, People are still going to go into next year still having a question that they've had since Jump Street. Is this, what is Deshaun Watson? Is he a franchise quarterback? And is he the guy that can lead us to the Super Bowl? And because they haven't got Dude, that there's yet. There's still so much season left, however. You're seven games in. There's a lot of season left still. There's still so much that could happen. I mean, why are we already saying that there's going to be these questions? Could there be? Yes. If this is a somewhat lost season, if Deshaun Watson never fully regains the strength and the velocity in his shoulder, then yes. But 
what if he does get better? And what if he does suddenly start playing like well, he played? Well, a different like, story. But well, there is. I guess we can <coughs> yeah. buy the They only had one game so far. Now, I'm not saying I'm saying this. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is people, it's like having a Christmas present and they keep telling you every yeah. month. Uh, uh, you can open it later. Right. And you're like, hold on, but, but Christmas yeah. is, was last no, month. No, Aditi, you're right. <clears throat> if he does get back to as close to 100% It'll as be he great. can get, then yes, we will have a better feel for it. I guess our assumption is that we're never going to see that this year. And and you're not as, as you know, you're not thinking that we might. You think there's a chance. No, I, so. I'm sitting here thinking we're going to see him this weekend. Well, <laughs> it no, might no, be for real? thinking. Look, I mean, okay. I'll be openly honest here. As a broadcaster, I root for the story. Sure. And so Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson <laughs> is a story that would make me very happy. Now, if it's Clayton Toon and Dorian Thompson Robinson, if it's PJ Walker and Clayton Toon, then great. Those are great stories too. No you offense left out to you, Jeff Clayton. Jeff Driscoll. Toon. No, Jeff Driscoll. Uh, love. Yes, right. Jeff Driscoll. <laughs> yes. Although the Jonathan Gannon has said that it'll either be Toon or although mm. Driscoll is the backup, so if something happens to Toon, there you go. Um, no, but obviously, I think that if Kyler Murray makes his debut for this coaching staff, his season debut, and if Deshaun Watson is healthy and ready to go in front of the dog pound, that's a heck of a story. That's it what I'm be. pulling for at yes. this moment. All due respect, PJ Walker and Clayton Toon. Adidas, you mentioned stories, and this is something we haven't spoken about yet on the show, but Jonathan Gannon's from Cleveland. He went to Sadie Nation yeah. High School, and this is the second time in three weeks now the Browns have played a former Eagles coordinator. So, and you're kind of studying of the Cardinals, and if you've talked to Gannon yet, what kind of makes him unique as a head coach and what should Browns fans be ready for on the opposing sideline come Sunday? With there, there's a lot here, and I, I can't share all of it because obviously I need to save some of it for the game. Ooh. Those of you that are not, even if you are in the Muni lot, at least listen, watch on your phones or something like that. Um, you know, he also goes back with Kevin Stefanski. The two of them were, uh, they're basically the same age. Their wives are good friends. They have kids around the same age. The two of them were in Minnesota together and um, have stayed really good friends through their various stops. And he, you're right. He did go to St. Ignatius. He was not a huge Browns fan. He was like 10 or 11 years old when the Browns left town. But his whole family is. And he said that his mom and his sister and his and to all of his in-laws, nieces, nephews, everybody's going to be at the stadium. And he <laughs> did say he's not sure if they'll be in Browns gear or if they'll be in <laughs> Cardinals gear. So there is that. He's, you know what, I'm a huge Jonathan Gannon fan. I really, really like him. I like how hard players play for him. I like um, how much he cares, how much he cares about people and his intensity. I think that, you know, they don't have the results, but there's no question that these players aren't playing hard for him. And uh, he, he takes chances. I, I shouldn't say it that way. He's willing to keep an open mind about people. For him, it's not only about who's the fancy draft pick or um, what is your pedigree. It's what are you doing for us now? And how are you playing for us now? And I appreciate that. He's starting a lot of young players right now. There are a lot of yeah. rookies on that team that are in key roles. Aditi, um the Browns have obviously two of the last three weeks found ways to win despite getting, I would say, neg you know, overall net negative play from the quarterback position. One touchdown, six turnovers for P.J. Walker. One touchdown, nine turnovers total between P.J. Walker and DTR. But they found ways to win. Last, You have talked about for the last few weeks, and it's been a really good point, hey, the defense has to win the games. They're you know, the alpha unit, they're the lead unit, whatever. Well, a lot was made of Kevin Stefanski throwing the ball last week on that third down play that led to an interception. It's a fair criticism, in my opinion, and I defend Stefanski, and I rarely complain about pet play calling. However, what I feel like has gotten lost a lot this week, outside of this show, is that in the end, after that turnover, the Browns defense that played, after playing terribly in the first quarter, played great for most of the rest of the game, they collapsed in that final drive yes. and allowed Seattle to yeah. march down the field. They failed to get the job done. In the end, as well as they played, they let the team down last week, I think. I, I'm, and I'm not going to disagree with you. It's funny because we talk about fans and how they see things, and our great friend Jason Lloyd wrote a phenomenal column about Kevin Stefanski and the coaching job he's doing this year that fans sometimes lose sight of. 
as fans keep focusing on that third and three, which let's be honest, was such a like freaky play that it hit the guy in the helmet anyway. You know, like the way that it all worked out. Right. And PJ Walker said he's made that throw a million times. It almost always goes by the player's head. This is what happens in the game of football. It's a game of inches. But so much is made of that play call and not of this stifling, ostensibly number one defense allowing, as you said, the opposing team to go all the way down the field. And I'm with you on that one. I feel like it's terrible that the offense turned the ball over. It's terrible that the defense was put in that position. But right now, you're starting a quarterback who's only been with the club for, what, like two months, who's still really learning a lot of the intricacies of the offense, who doesn't have a ton of experience. You've got to step it up. You can't make That's mistakes right. like that. So, yes. But, you know, what can they do? They flush it. They show up on Wednesday. They flush it. They put it behind them. And like I said just a few minutes ago, there's still a lot of season left. A lot of season left. Yeah. I would also argue, P.S., that the run defense hasn't been that great recently either. It has not. And the level of physicality hasn't quite been the same as we saw a few weeks ago. Seattle That's ran fair. for 117 yards on 13 carries. Indianapolis, they, obviously, yeah, Gardner Minshew well. ran Yeah, I mean, and there were, lapses in that, there were lapses in that Indy game, quite yeah. frankly. I mean, were there amazing moments where it was, thank goodness for Miles Garrett? Sure, but then Gardner Minshew was also moving the ball on them. They've really so, struggled against the read option, which I know is a staple of what Arizona does. And with Clayton Toon potentially a quarterback, I, mean, I have no idea if Clayton Toon can run the read option, but if Kyler Murray's back, I know it's his first game, but that can be something they utilize. He's, I mean, he's a little bit more of like a, you know, pocket pa He's not Kyler Murray, let's say that. But I think that the Cardinals are quite bullish on Kyler Mur Murray being potentially ready to go, you know? So he's carrying a full workload. Adina. And that's a whole level, other level of di of athleticism. Sorry about that, Mikey. Go no, ahead. No, you're good. Do, do you think we'll have an announcement necessarily from either side by Friday, or is this going to be a game time decision for both teams? No, I mean, well, with Kyler Murray, at least on Saturday, you'd have to know, right, if he's being activated right. or not. And I doubt that they would actually activate him if they're not playing him simply because you don't have to. It's not like that window ends and you have to make a decision Saturday. So if you're not going to play him, why waste a spot on him? Mm -hmm. So I think that if they do activate him Saturday, that you'll know that. The Browns, I don't know. I don't know if they'll have it go to a game time decision. Even in Indianapolis, all the signs were pointing to Deshaun Watson getting the start, but the Browns didn't want us to definitively say on Saturday night he was definitely starting because, I mean, crazy things can happen. What if he fell in the shower on Sunday? What if he woke up on Sunday with an enormous amount of stiffness? You don't know, and I think that that's just kind of where we are right now in the game as well, that when guys are kind of teetering or even if not questionable, but like probable, if you don't have to definitely say until 90 minutes before, why definitely say until 90 minutes before? It's a good point. Adina, the Browns traded DPJ to Detroit this week, and that means, or at least we hope, Cedric Tillman will get a bigger chance to showcase why the Browns drafted him in the third round on Sunday. We had this discussion earlier. G and Bull think he will not have a single catch on Sunday. I seem to think the Browns will make sure he, uh, they showcase what he can do. What can we expect from Cedric Tillman? And is it too fair to expect yeah, I, one catch from their third round pick? Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think that Kevin Stefanski is sitting here thinking, oh, well, I need to go and justify why DPJ was traded, yes, so let me exactly. make sure that I can mm. showcase the guy that's there. I mean, it was a loaded wide receiver room, and I think it was a nice thing to do for DPJ to get him off to a place where he could have more opportunity and he could have more chances. I mean, that was sort of like the Josh Dobbs trade, is that would they have liked to have kept Josh Dobbs? Yeah, but Josh was getting an opportunity to start. So, okay, why not? Um I think one catch is fair. I do. But I also feel like it hinges on who's playing quarterback. <laughs> I, thank you. <laughs> Wait a second. Aditi, the Lions have a better wide receiver room than the Browns do. Uh, I think that TPJ will find space there. I think he will be able to contribute. Well, because they have a better passing game and they have a better quarterback right now. Ja Currently. I, Jared Goff, Correct. Man, I did not think Jared Goff was good. He's been really good for the Lions the last two years. Outside I mean, of that Ravens game two weeks ago where yeah. they were terrible. But overall, with Detroit, he's been really good. It's another reason that fan bases should have patience. I remember last year having the Lions, and the Lions were in the midst of, I don't know, they'd lost like four or five, or, you know, they were not in a good place. And um, Sheila 
Hemp, Hemp, I don't, I want to say her name and I don't know. She's the owner. I'm not, I can't believe I'm screwing this up, but she had come out that week and sort of given Dan Campbell the vote of confidence and said, I know he doesn't need to hear me say this because I tell it to him all the time, but I want all of you to hear me say this. And I remember having the conversation with Dan Campbell that week. How do you actually teach a team how to win a close game or close out a game? And he said, you know what Bill Parcells used to say is that you learn how to win a close game by winning a close game, that at some point you just have to do it. And so ownership in Detroit had patience with Dan Campbell. Eventually, they won a close game, and then they rattled off a ton of wins. And you saw what they, how they ended the season. It's another reason of why you should have patience and why you need to have patience with your coaches and why you need to have patience with certain players. Because once it breaks, it can break. It can't break until it breaks the first time. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, l- l- listen, we, we got the DBJ, DPJ move. Um, another guy we haven't seen since the first part of the season is DTR. Um, I, I said that, hey, if Deshaun Watson, they may use PJ Walker this game. Kevin Stefanski has really told us that. Um, but if I was them at some point, I might go back to DTR. What are your thoughts on, on him possibly being ready to play if P.J. Walker is not doing the job? I don't, you know, I, I can't t- give you any sort of degree. I can't say with any degree of confidence. I know he's in a better spot than he was when he was pressed into starting against the Ravens. I think this, a lot of this right now comes down to P.J. Walker's turnover issue. He's got to clean that up. He full well knows that he has to clean that up. Each one kind of has its own story, but still there's nothing more important than taking care of the football and protecting the football. And so at some point, if Deshaun Watson isn't healthy, if he cannot go, if it looks like there's a long period of time in this case, then yes, that could be considered. But again, I'm going to preface all of this by saying I think that there is optimism surrounding Deshaun Watson. All right, and not just because I rather cover a game with Deshaun Watson. Oh, Didi said Deshaun Watson is definitely playing this week. Put and it so down. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Kyler Murray. <laughs> Kyler Murray. Okay, Deshaun yes. Kyler. Oh. All right, guys. All Talk right, to Deedee. you later. We'll see-